Well, um, my recent visit to Congo, uh, to the eastern parts, that is the north and south Kivus, um, revealed that uh, there is still a rather unstable situation uh, in the east. And um, this was a follow-up to the uh, atrocities uh, in the Valikale territory um, late August, beginning of September. And um, I was rather worried to visit some of these villages because um, um, still people are traumatized and um, in a kind of, in a state of shock, I would say. And not only that, but they fear that uh, their attackers might come back or even that the deployment of uh, government troops in this area might mean that they also have to live off the population. They are deployed there without enough to eat, without pay, without uh, barracks. So it means that uh, they are afraid that they will have to, that they will start to loot and, and pillage these, these villages as, as well. And then we can assume rape, unfortunately. This is actually uh, an area where, uh, close to the mining, um, mining activities, so the BC uh, mining district. So it means that uh, some of the men from these small villages probably um, work uh, in the in the mining uh, business or to support the mining business. But very often these small mines are controlled by rebel groups or. Uh, sometimes uh, by, by government uh, troops as, as well. And um, it means that it's a very sort of unsafe uh, uh, situation for, for civilians. And uh, um, unfortunately, this is something that fuels the, the ongoing conflict and some of the rebels. Uh, so it leaves the civil population very exposed and under a kind of constant threat. Well, everybody said the same thing. They want peace and they hope that peace will bring peace also to the women. Um, this is not, uh, we cannot be sure that it brings peace to the women because when this is done at the scale that we saw in the Valikade territory and in these villages, uh, unfortunately, it, it brutalizes the whole society. It spills over on the, the civil society. Um, and that means, um, you know, a new generation of young men and boys will also think that, that this is a, a, a natural thing. Uh, and women uh, don't feel that they have, that they are valued. That they, and one young woman said to us that she, her impression was, and she was of course very distraught, but she said, I, a dead rat is worth more than the body of a woman. And, and I think this just shows that at the moment, the women who are very much the backbone of the economy of the DRC um, are just sort of not valued. They are, they are broken. And that means also it will be so much more difficult to build peace and any kind of economic development in the DRC. They, they, are, they are dead tired. They are so tired of, of having to work so hard. To, they carry sort of the heavy burdens. The women, they fetch firewood and water. They, they go to the market. They uh, grow things. They uh, are the ones who carry the children and take very much responsibility for, for the families. And if this is also done to them, um, they they are just traumatized. They are they they feel very very tired and let down, and very often when they have been um, when they've been raped, uh, they are also rejected by their husbands and uh, by their families, and that means uh, also that they will have no no income and will be marginalized and stigmatized. Uh, so there are several problems following in the, the trades of, of sexual violence. We can learn that this is such a heavy impediment to building peace and to have any kind of economic development in a country. We can learn that this will affect a society for generations to come. 
uh, we can learn that this has to be addressed now. It cannot wait. And it is um, through fighting impunity that uh, we can be effective in, in doing so. Um, but we also need to make sure that the women uh, who have been exposed to, to rape or sexual violence, that they are helped, that they are assistant with everything from medical care to, to so psychosocial uh, advice and counseling. Um, so that's what we all have to, to uh, take responsibility for. We listened to some women who um, wanted to bear witness of what they've been through. And they, one woman said that um, after the, the gang rape that she was exposed to, exposed to she lost a, a child. She could not have any more children. And um, she felt that her life was over. I mean, you. You kind of kill a person without taking their lives, uh, and uh, or the other way around. You you uh, take their lives without killing them. Um, that that was her feeling. And when we asked her what would be the normal, if this had not happened to you, what would be the normal relationship with your husband and. And she didn't seem to understand the question. She said the, the life of a woman is to work. It's to work and to to give birth to children and then sort of please your husband or do whatever he tells you sexually at night. That's, that's the life of a woman. And, and there was sort of no joy, no love, no, no, no concept of what we would think was a dignified life. And that was very, very depressing to, to hear. Um, there is um, no quick solution to all of this, but I want, of course, the Security Council to use all the tools available to them, including sanctions, looking at whether we can put perpetrators uh, to justice and to put them on their lists. Um, I want uh, the government uh, in the DRC and everywhere where this is a problem, it's not only an African problem, to take this seriously, also to do everything they can to ensure that we put an end to impunity, to address the problem of impunity, and also to assist the women, to empower women, to make sure that they have uh, a voice and a, a seat at uh, the table where decisions are made. Uh, so there are a number of things that the UN has to ensure that in peacekeeping operations we can protect the civilians and that means women, that we have to look at the best ways to, to protect civilians. Well, we are contacted by a lot of people who have great ideas about uh, to equip women with everything from sort of small, small weapons that could help them to defend themselves to, to uh, communication gadgets, you know, that they can um, uh, warn other women, that they can call for help, uh, etc. And I, I think everything is worth uh, testing, uh, you know, we, we have to do everything. But the, the thing is, it should not fall on the women to actually also have to, to sort of physically defend themselves. This is also response. It's not a women's issue. This is a, a peace and security issue. And we have to make sure that we go after the perpetrators. So I would put much more focus on, on finding the perpetrators and punishing them to close every exit, every possible um, career possibility for, for these guys so that they know that there is no mercy for, for rapists.